So until and unless we have a leader who sacrifice, election is one part, but you know govern, governance is the other part. So until and unless you sacrifice, until and unless you think for the future, you will not be able to create those assets. I think as the opposition you have to counter that when, when you don't see things really happening. Uh, we talk of the medical college that has uh, been you know, conceptualized long time ago. It still hasn't come up here. It has come up in Tura. The, I mean, the progress is very rapid. So these are the things maybe that the social media team can look into and maybe it will help the government also perform better. It will be a check on the government. Don't you think that uh, it's important that the party conducts some leadership training camps? Because leadership doesn't come easily to everyone. It needs special qualities. But political parties never have these, uh, these trainings. If we want to grow after the election, we should forget about election. We should focus on the development. So our development cannot be by the ruling government alone. It should be also uh, with the other groups of oppositioners. For example, if you make a road, you have to make for everybody, not only for ruling or not only for opposition. You make institutions, a school or a health sector. It has to be for everybody. Good afternoon, viewers. Today, in a series of interviews with the Shillong Times, we have the Lok Sabha MP, Mr. Vincent Pala, who's also the new president of the Meghalaya Pradesh Congress Committee. Good morning, sir, and uh, thank you for agreeing to this interview. You have recently taken over as the president MPCC. What are your immediate challenges, your long-term challenges, and your priorities at this point for the party? Uh, you're right. I've just taken over. I think I'm not even sat in my office my office is in the renovation i think it'll take another two weeks to complete the renovation the immediate challenge is how to bring all those uh, congress workers and congress leaders who have left the party and uh, they have joined to other parties and most of them who uh, you know who were thrown out of the party very unceremoniously and many of them they express their willingness to come back so i think i have to call them I call where they have uh, they have been in the party for the last 30 40 years some of them and uh, they still uh, wanted to come not to contest election but just to help the party growing and especially now for the last uh, one month I've been meeting almost all the big leaders so but it's uh, I'm very happy to see that some people are willing to come back with enthusiasm and people are willing to support the Congress this is a immediate, uh, uh, you know, um, job on my, on my, uh, yeah. on my agenda and as the president. Yeah. But at the same time, for long term, we are planning to do uh, aggressively uh, uh, enrollment of the uh, youth. We call it, uh, uh, you know, there's a technology through an apps which will be launched from 30th of uh, this month, just immediately after the. Uh, voting mm -hmm. so we will launch it that means from first to fifth there will be the uh, filing of uh, nominations for those leaders who wants to contest to become a youth president in the state so we are doing that and at the same time we are launching an applications through whatsapp for example if you say hello uh, to a particular number so the uh, question the answer will come to you and the questions you have to answer your name and then the, your uh, I, uh, epic number and everything so you'll be enrolled you'll get your id and all so with these i think we um, i plan to enroll as much as more than 25 to 30 percent of the congress uh, you know I I in the state it's a huge challenge i know but i hope within a span of one and a half to two years i don't look only for the election 2023 mm -hmm. but beyond 2023 how to go to the grassroots level so until unless we do an aggressive uh, enrollment drive for the youth as well as for the general public uh, we will not be able to sustain in the future this is my short term and long term plan so this is the age of social media but we see very little interaction of the congress on social media so how do you reach out to people 
exactly what uh, you say it's the age of social media nowadays that's why until unless we have enough data in our hand it's no point of running a social media mm -hmm. so to sustain that's why we need to develop our own system our own technology when we can reach to everybody this is exactly what you said that uh, until unless we have the data in our hand it's no point for us to have a team for social media so we are i'm in the process i hope it'll take me 2 to 3 months to build the system to build the data and to connect to everybody my target is should by march i should be able to get all this in place at least up to 50% of our target mm -hmm. because nowadays uh, see the government claims to be doing a whole lot of things i think as the opposition you have to counter that when when you don't see things really happening uh, we talk of the medical college that has uh, been, you know, conceptualized long time ago. It still hasn't come up here. It has come up in Tura. The, I mean, the progress is very rapid. So these are the things maybe that the uh, social media team can look into and maybe it will help the government also perform better. It will be a check on the government. So you have been touring the state, as you said, to rebuild the party here in Meghalaya. Uh, how does it feel to be the leader of the Congress party now in the state? Yeah, I, I've been touring not all, you know, almost 30% uh, of uh, the state, especially in my constituency, of course, I've gone to every nook and corners of the villages and all, but I still, Garuhils, I'm yet to explore. But in my recent trip to Garuhils and uh, Khasi and Giant Hills, I've seen People in the village are very fond of Congress. And then whenever I have a meeting, I normally don't speak much, but I used to tell people to uh, question me or what they want, any clarification, and there'll be like a debate, you know, interaction with them. So I'm very happy to see people in the village are so much aware more than me about the Congress. One day I went to uh, Amlarim. You know, the one gentleman came out and showed me the letter written by uh, Rajiv Gandhi to him in uh, 1990, yeah, 1990, Rajiv Gandhi has written a letter to him appreciating his works as the bloc's president and also remind him that we should work for the party. So you could see that people preserve, treasure all those correspondence with the party workers. And then one, uh, there, uh, there was one lady, I think he's 75 years old. She told me that I never voted for the Congress but sometimes I feel very bad when the Congress, they don't give a good leader. So our job is that, you know, people are already with the Congress, but we have only to provide them a good leader. And to get a good leader is a very challenging because, you know, nowadays leaders can be easily carried over with the business, carried over with uh, other uh, temptations and all. So only my job is to get a good leader for the people. And to get a good leader, I think uh, you all know, Many leaders would be there, but to get a good leader, dedicated leader, is not very easy. Don't you think that uh, it's important that the party conducts some leadership training camps? Because leadership doesn't come easily to everyone. It needs special qualities. But political parties never have these, uh, these trainings. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I, I'm on the job. I'm already in touch uh, with a uh, uh, few fathers from Bangalore, IS officers and even the last time, because of COVID, otherwise last time I also hired one uh, trainer from America who was a very good trainer from uh, Washington mm -hmm. uh, to train our youth. We have booked a space, actually, we have already paid them advance or so to, before I became a president, mm -hmm. I have already paid them advance or so. So I have uh, in touch with the father who started the Don Bosco University in Guwahati. Okay. He is ready to help me in training not only the Congress youth, I had a plan, uh, yeah, youth in general, not only from Mekalaya, from lots of my friends, their children also from West Bengal. So he promised to help me, but we, he designed also the program. He designed, can, I can give you the program he designed also, along with a team. And we hired a professional uh, consultancy to uh, do those, those job for us. Actually, I'm, do, I'm planning to do that because I've experienced myself until unless you get a proper training. Yes. Until unless you develop the youth now, it's difficult to get in the future. So I appreciate your questions, actually, on this line.
let me come to the Congress Party. The Congress Party has been a national party with a regional outlook, but it has always stood against, you know, the divisive tendencies of ethno-nationalism. So, and it has stood against the demand of the inner line permit for a long time. Why is it now that the Congress also has started demanding the inner line permit? I think uh, I, this is my uh, personal uh, opinion uh, because we have not uh, taken a decision after I took over uh, in terms we have not done a debate on inner line permit. Uh, inner line permits has been issues right from 1862, 63, 64. People, especially the tribal peoples, because of our uh, looks, culture, habits, and customs, we always feel a threat to the uh, people who are smarter than us, more educated than us, more wealthy than us. So, uh, being in uh, politics, I think uh, more majority of the leaders they think that if they don't op they don't um, ask for a pro inline permit they may lose the election but to me I think the inline permit what was uh, uh, there during the Bengal frontier uh, regulation and now, act yeah mm -hmm. and now I think it's totally different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those days uh, the British has given it just to protect their interests yes but today we are I know if you look at uh, those uh, laws which I read it Thoroughly, it is not for the interest of the public alone, but for the interest of the resources which we have in mm -hmm. the Northeast. Mm -hmm. But as on today, with tourism is coming, as on today, with our people, many of our people are being educated uh, within the Northeast and within the state and outside. I think we have to have, uh, it may be named an online permit, it may be a protection, but we must have a, a system with a technology which we, we can. Track uh, people we, down. We can preserve and mm -hmm. uh, promote also, mm -hmm. not only preserve. If we are too much against protection, yes. then definitely we'll, we'll face a problem in the future. Yes. There'll be a brain drain also. Yes. But we should look into a system where we, we can grow, we can be protected, at the same time we, we can get development also. Mm -hmm. It's high time for us to think that we should be self-sustained in the states rather than depend on the mainland. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. definitely we are slower, poorer, and the other people are smarter than us. But at the same time, I fully agree that we need protection from uh, the mainland at certain level. But at but what cost uh, and how much? How much of protection? Yeah, because protection. we already have the six schedule. Yeah, yeah. We are scheduled tribes. Mm. We have job reservations. We have educational reservation. So uh, I think over protectionism might yeah, not be good for our youth. Don't yeah, you for, think? For example, you know, um, if the people comes and start buying huge land. Yeah. So we need a protection so mm -hmm. that so that in the future our people will not be landless. But you have the Land Transfer Act? Yes, yes, exactly. So the Land Transfer Act, uh, you are right, the Land Transfer Act here, it is uh, regulated. It's not, uh, it's not banned. For example, like uh, the industrialists, mm -hmm. they may need only uh, 500 hectares of land, but they will buy 1,000 acres of land okay. uh, to, for them to sell it to others. Mm -hmm. So we have to look in those, like some exceptional case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas now, suppose you want to start a business, like you, you are a tribal, you want to start a business, you cannot mortgage your land. Other people can mortgage their land, and then they can get, re they can get resources, you know, for loan and all. So I've seen young boys and girls they have nothing, but they have only their land. So there must be a system where they can convert their land or uh, resources into monetary mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. they can start the business. So all those things, we look, that's why I said we have to look at protection. Also so don't you think that uh, Meghalaya actually needs a very coherent economic policy? Yes, Which definitely. we have not had for yeah, a... Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and to make an economic policy, I think it's not, an, it's a, it's not a one day job. No, no, it's... Uh, we, need, uh, a, we need an expert mm -hmm. and we need to do a study, we need to do a research yes. based on our customs. Mm -hmm. So we cannot grow too fast where we cannot catch up also. We have to grow in such a way where, you know, in such yes. a pace where we can also follow. Mm -hmm. If we try to grow very fast and definitely will be out of our hand. Our people, for example, now, if we try to have a club system, I've seen lots of people think that we should have a nightclub, we have to do this, have that. So we, our people cannot cope up to that, so it may spoil us also. So we must have a system in such a way, don't, like, uh, it should be compatible to our people. Yes, yes. Okay, so the Congress has been in power in Meghalaya for almost about 40 out of the 50 years that we are going to turn in next year. Mm. Uh, 
what has been achieved, what has not been achieved, what are the high points of the Congress rule and what are the low ebbs? Uh, definitely Congress was in uh, power for quite a long time and there's no denying the fact that Congress also has done a lot, especially for Mekalia. They have built lots of uh, assets, be it in health, be in education, be it in road. So uh, they have done lots of, uh, lots of uh, assets for the state of Meghalaya and uh, definitely many more to do also. There's no denying the fact that we have not done up to a certain level. Mm -hmm. But what I thought is that, you know, those days and these days are different. Mm -hmm. India were poor those days. But today, India, after the open of India in 1990, there's a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So Meghalaya also has to be in line with the rest of the world. Yes. Today, the world is open. The world is in your in your in, in your fingertips in mm. the mobile whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So those days and these days there's a, a change. So we have to cope up with the change. Uh, for example, we need to open more border trade between uh, India and Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. We need also to open the more connectivity. As of today, Shillong has been connected with uh, Tripura, Aizol, mm -hmm. and now uh, Dibugar and uh, Dimapur also. So I was telling the minister if he can connect all the northeastern states capital and also Delhi. Today mm -hmm. uh, there's a flight uh, once or twice a, a week, a, a month, not oh. a week. Once a week or that twice a month. That fly big. Uh, yeah, fly big. Mm. This is totally at the cost of the state. Mm -hmm. So, But we need to sustain. This at the cost of state will not be able yes. to sustain. So there must be a system where we can sustain. Now tourism, Meghalaya, the biggest opportunity for us is tourism. So until unless we have uh, the connectivity, both digital connectivity and uh, even we have to get flight, uh, edu uh, yeah, yeah, we have the communication, then we'll not be able to grow up to that level. So what is preventing Boeings from landing at Umroy? And how long will we take before a proper flight lands in uh -huh. the States? You're right. Actually, you know, Boeing needs at least uh, uh, 6,800 meters to land, roughly 7,000 meters mm -hmm. to land. Mm -hmm. We have in, in Umroy 7,000 uh, meters, which I think Boeing should land. Uh, as long as the airport and uh, but we they have a problem sometimes it's cloudy so they may not be able to not very safe that's why they try to cut those they chop up the trees and chop up the hills and the church also they have uh, reallocated there. We have seen that uh, visibility there will always be low because yes. of the dam yeah, and yeah, the yeah. so why hasn't the state thought of another venue another place for aircrafts to land? Yeah th definitely I think uh, today we are uh, discussing also in the morning for the same thing uh, I think we have to have a, uh, a place I personally feel that even Umroy can be converted. If you see in uh, South America, yeah, in Umroy can we we can do even in Umroy, but it has to be you know landing has to be in one way. So we would we would uh, need uh, a proper both ways rather. And you know uh, we have got the instrument landing system. We have got the uh, 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 what you call VOR, but uh, I think. Uh, there should be no problem even in Umroy because the uh, Virgin Greenfield Airport will take us almost uh, 10, almost uh, 1000 crores. So until unless uh, the government, uh, especially the central government has enough money, we should not. Last time when I was a minister, I was told by Prime Minister to look alternative. We went to so many places to look alternative, but unfortunately, you know, during the process, I was uh, uh, drop also and then at the same time uh, uh, the government suddenly economy was down in 2008 and also to come out of that system it took us for some time but in Sikkim we got Arunachal we got and Meghalaya also we should get I went to many places but uh, I think uh, many places we can get also for Meghalaya that should not be a problem definitely once uh, I think uh, if you give it a push as the Lok Sabha uh, member hmm. since uh, your friend Jyotir Aditya Sindhya is taking keen interest in promoting the airports mm. of the region. Maybe we can see something bright. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But it needs also a push by the uh, Chief Minister, especially during the uh, uh, meeting where we have the NEC meeting. When, it, when we have the NEC meeting, the Chief Minister should put as a top agenda for this.
Uh, then from there, then once it comes to Delhi, I've written a letter to Prime Minister on this issue. Try to give us a, a virgin greenfield project so that we can start out from the beginning. Uh, that's why they try to promote okay. Umroy now. Okay. Now let me come to a very critical point that has beset uh, the Congress Party after you took over. Uh, so it, according to Dr. Mukul Sangma, he says he was not taken into confidence when you were appointed and all that. And uh, uh, you know there are rumor mills saying that he is exploring other venues, other opportunities. So. Is he staying on in the party or is he looking for a possible exit route? And what actually are the points of contention between you and Dr. Sangma? Actually, as far as I'm uh, concerned, I have uh, no personal uh, problem with uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma. Is it because uh, you're coming back to state politics? Uh, I don't think and so. And you're going to be the chief ministerial <laughs> candidate? No, no, I don't think so. Actually, uh, you know, AICC, they send the in-charge to Meghalaya on uh, 5th to 7th of January in 2021 to see because there are lots of complaints by the MLAs and the party workers that we need a president mm -hmm. because Dr. Sirishtin Langdo uh, did not have time because his mother was not well mm -hmm. and mother is still not well. Mm -hmm. So then he himself has written and uh, to Madam that we need uh, to put a new president okay. in place. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, AICC came here and consulted everybody. Okay. Then at that point of time, I don't know because they were supposed to give four or five names to Madam. And uh, somebody again raised the questions uh, that uh, uh, no, 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 he should come again. So again from AICC, they sent him here. So he came here, he consulted everybody and during the consultations and Dr. Mukul Sangma was there, I was there, Silesian was there, everybody were there. So they given a report, so ultimately I was appointed. But Dr. Mukul, uh, when I, um, I told him about uh, me, why, what's the problem with me, and he said nothing to do with me. He was not properly consulted maybe and he took that, so nothing to do with me between him and EICC. So AICC called him to Delhi. I was also there. He had a long talk with AICC, with uh, the in charge, uh, as well as uh, Venu Kupal and even uh, Jitender Singh and uh, Rahul Gandhi also. And after that, during the discussion, then, then Mukul said, is, is everything is all right now. In the future, whatever we do, we should do it together. So I think that's over. So according to me, I don't think Dr. Mukul will leave the party easily and uh, might be the perception at the beginning. He thought that maybe uh, I may not be able to uh, cooperate with him, but I'm very easy. I cannot cooperate, I can talk with opposition, with anybody. I have, I always put my personal uh, interests behind and the party's interests in front of me because uh, Meghalaya needs a, a good party also, and needs a good leaders also. Until unless we all put our heads and hands and hurts together difficult for us to get 2023 everyone is talking about it now and your appointment is meant to rejuvenate the party to gear up for the coming uh, assembly elections so are you i'm coming back to that same question are you giving up your lok sabha seat in favor of some other candidate and are you coming to state politics uh, you know, 2023 definitely I've been given the responsibility to task for the 2023 election. So it doesn't mean that when I come to state politics, I have to give the Lok Sabha. Many of the presidents of the party, most of them are MPs only. Because as an MP, you can reach to many areas, to many people, and example, travel costs with facilities given by the parliament with a bit of uh, the reach out, the you know, the respects which the people has. I think that's it, towards my advantage to be a president at the same time to be an MP or so. Uh, as far as the uh, state politics, uh, I had, I'm not very over ambitious with compared to many of my friends. I still enjoy Delhi, I like to work, but uh, there's no denying the fact if the party told me, I mean, if the party wants me to contest MLA, if the party wants me not to contest or if the, whatever the party decides for me, I'm ready to abide with that because until unless somebody sacrifice, yes. party will not grow. 
So I'm ready to any level wherever my party will tell me. But to my mind, we have uh, enough leaders, rather we have more leaders. So there should not be a shortage of leaders in the Congress. Uh, at the national level, the Congress seems to be a divided house. You have the so-called G23 and uh, the Rahul loyalists are jostling for supremacy. Do you think that Rahul Gandhi is the best bet for your party? I think as on date, you are right, as on date, uh, uh, we, uh, Rahul Gandhi, I've worked with him for the last 12 years. I find he's number one, he's an honest man. Number two, very hardworking. Number three, I don't know what people feel of him, but whenever we have a meeting, I find him, he used to take a very correct decision. At the same time, he discussed with everybody and he listened to everybody. He had so much patience to listen even to, to everybody, even people like us who come from remote areas. Whenever we sit, normally I used to sit in the back mm -hmm. and uh, people used to come for, because we always used to come late. Then Rahul Gandhi will listen to every, right from back seat to the front seat. Mm -hmm. And I find him as a very reasonable leader actually. But again, like what you said, so many, we leaders sometimes, we have people surround us. So it, our people who advise us is very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, Rahul Gandhi, I think uh, we fail as a Congress, not as Rahul Gandhi. Example, Punjab, if Punjab can win election, if Kerala can win election last time, and if Meghalaya could win election last time. So sometimes we should not depend totally on Rahul Gandhi. So you should also depend on the state and the regional leaders, exactly like what you said. No, because pe people are saying that, uh, you know, Narendra Modi is too strong a uh, figure for Rahul Gandhi to contest because uh, you know it, it the balance seems to tilt in favor of Modi and believe me uh, I think in the country if you take a call today many people feel that we need a strong opposition uh, to you know to tame the BJP which is which seems to be going haywire. See I don't take Modi as a strong leader after being in parliament for the third term I don't take Modi as a strong leader number one if you listen to his his speech most of the time the same speech everywhere whatever he is speaking in Jammu and Kashmir he'll speak the same thing in Shillong number two he won election because of Muslim Hindu Muslim Hindu anti minorities you can win election one twice or me at the most thrice but people will realize one day and number three you know education was very important uh, I've seen in social media, media, you know, Rahul Kanti, you could say that that man is his classmate, he qualified from this university. Mm -hmm. But Modi, you don't know, he was uh, a tea uh, seller, but he didn't have any friends. He was, he passed from university, but he didn't have any classmates, any professor. <laughs> so in that line, if you compare Rahul Kanti and Modi, as a human being, I think Rahul Gandhi is quite a better leader than Modi. If you see how Modi handles the international, he fails in, uh, in Nepal. We totally fail in Nepal. We fail in Sri Lanka. We fail in Maldives. We fail even in Russia now. We fail, uh, we fail in China. So how will you tell him as a great leader when you fail everywhere? He failed to uh, handle everywhere, be it in women's safety, be it in uh, international uh, security. So I think uh, what they have, what Modi has taken the decision as of now is not f good for the for for the country. He takes only for the interest of a certain religion or certain sections of people. Uh, so Meghalaya is going to touch 50 years next year. Uh, you know how we have cynics everywhere. Some cynics say that this hill state has turned into a hell state because uh, we don't see too much of a future. Our indicators are so bad. In terms of uh, development, in terms of infrastructure, it's not a one day job. It needs lots of time, lots of planning. Like exactly like what you said, you know, we need not plan only for five years, we have to plan 10 years. And to do those planning, it should not be involved only the politicians. Yes. We need also the deputy commissioner, we need also the public works department, all the implementing agencies, mm -hmm. their views, their concerns and, 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 and their uh, uh, suggestions also has to be adjusted. For example, I want everything to bring to my constituency, but that is not fair for others also. So until and unless we have a leader who sacrifice, election is one part, 
but you know coven covenants is the other part so until unless you sacrifice until unless you think for the future you'll not be able to create those assets for example exactly like the Shlong Jawai Road so but they are supposed to hand over to the National Highway Authority or NHL for a long time only for the interest of one or two contractors they have not handed it over they have finished the land acquisition long back Bapra Stone had announced that from civil hostel to Mankrang we are going to Hanover. What about Mankrang to Jawai? Because they, the, the present government thinks for their personnel, for their contractors, for the ministers. I think that should not be, you know, that should not be the idea. If we want to grow after the election, we should forget about election, we should focus on the development. So a development cannot be by the ruling government alone. It should be also uh, with the other groups of oppositioners. For example, if you make a road, you have to make for everybody, not only for ruling or, or not only for opposition, you make institutions, a school mm -hmm. or he uh, health sector. It has to be for everybody. But uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, you know, in the present government, they don't look at those uncle, uh, be in public works department, be it in health, like what you said, uh, Sin Mukul has started the medical uh, college in uh, Shillong. Mm -hmm. Now they just, uh, I think, forget and forgot it. Yes. And in Tura, because they have interest. So that should not be, you know, that, that should not be the, the spirit. Yes. The spirit which should be for everybody, the spirit which should be for the future. The future for the people of the yeah, state. for the people of the state as a whole. Uh, let me come to a very critical area, which is coal mining. Mm. What do you think is the best way to utilize Meghalaya's coal reserves? You know, coal mining is not a very complicated uh, subject. Coal normally used to be the central subject. But because of Indira Gandhi, uh, those days, and uh, Congress was in power, and the reserve is very low, and the seam is very thin, so they thought that it's not viable for the coal India to mine it. When they have uh, 10, 15 meters height in Bihar, West Bengal, Jharkhand and other states, why should they come here? And They tried, they have done lots of drilling from coal India. So they realized, so those days the common acquired only eight mines. Eight mines, that is in Sherapanji area, in West Kassils and Rhea. Whereas those areas like Janta Hills and all, they did not acquire it. So I think the only way to, to to uh, do a proper mining is to have uh, a state's policy because what is mined in other parts of the country cannot be mined in Meghalaya. Mm -hmm. I fully uh, endorse with your views that we must have a special policy where we should sustain in the future uh, and this can be done by the state and we need also to amend the act. Last time I moved a bill for the amendment of the MMDR Act 1986 and uh, it has been amended up to certain level but not giving a full authority to the state. So Mekhalaya, we have the best coal in the world. The colorific value is more than 7,600, minimum 7,200, especially in Janta Hills. And in reserve, we have a huge in Garo Hills and West Kasi Hills. But we have already ex uh, explored almost 30%, and 70% uh, are yet to be explored in West Kasi Hills and in uh, Garo Hills. Of course, in Giant Hills, we have already explored more than 80%. But if you want to survive and sustain in the long run, we must have a system or a mechanism like Mekhalaya should not be in line with the rest of the country. I was also in one of the meetings when I attended on coal uh, mining. I told them every state has got their own laws. Every state has got their own system. For example, in Mekhalaya, we have the heaviest rainfall in the world. Mm -hmm. So even storage of coal will, uh, you know, will uh, uh, hamper the rest of the uh, low-lying areas wherever you store. So the rivers. Uh, the rivers and all. So it's very important for us to have to develop a system, a mechanism uh, in such a way that people can mine. You should not have a law where people cannot mine. People can, uh, can mine at the same time, the environment also will be safe. And there's no problem with the latest technology and with the new... Uh, now people also realize that we need to mine properly. I see in Giant Hills, I've seen uh, because of the government's encouragement of the uh, illegal mining, people are still mining. And, but people at the same time realize that we need a proper system. For example, limestone. Now, 
I think 60% of people mined in limestone with the uh, mining lease. Yes. At least the government gets a revenue. But illegal, only the ministers, the police and the concerned people will get revenue, but not to the state government. So I think the state government has to seriously think on this. And definitely uh, people now are more advanced than politicians. Mm -hmm. They know. Yes. And until and the, if the government doesn't correct themselves, I think they'll face a serious challenge in the future. So we hear that you are attending the conference of parties, which is the biggest, it's the global environmental conference from October 31st to November 12th. What will be your agenda there? What are you going to speak on? Uh, you see, I have a very uh, less role to play on that level. The Prime Minister of India will go. I am a member of the Parliamentarian on Climate Change. We have all over the world a group of parliamentarians on climate change. So from India, I'm a convener. Mm -hmm. So I'll be attending with, along with the chairman of the group, Dr. Sanjay Jaswal. He is the president of the BJP in Bihar. Mm -hmm. Along with me also, we have our friends from um, Andhra Pradesh. Three of us are supposed to uh, attend the program. So along, we, our job is only to advise the government along with the international experts. Uh, our chairman is from uh, Australia and also we have a very uh, a president is from uh, UK himself. He's the main man in the, in the committee uh, of the climate change. So when we go there, I'm planning to take us uh, issues especially with concern to the uh, Northeast. Uh, that day I was uh, telling my research team to find out what can we help people in Jhum cultivation. Not to stop Jhum cultivation but rather how to find innovative, innovative ways to help them. For example, uh, Meghalaya, we are very famous of pine trees, mm -hmm. but it takes us 30 years for us to, you know, until from the day you grow it until the day you cut it, it takes us 30 years. Why not get some other trees which can be only 10 to 15 years, where we people can get at least three times uh, faster revenue, especially in the village, we have lots of lands, fertile lands, we can use those. So my job is to assist to help the people in case if they cut the trees what is an alternative and from where we can get finance and what type of soil we use and what type of uh, uh, tree we should grow. What are your views on this oil palm cultivation idea? I personally uh, think that if we want to do oil palm we need to do first lots of research. There is adequate research from places like countries like Malaysia, Indonesia that it is bad for climate, it's yeah. bad for the soil, yes, it's yes, uh, yes, very yes. water intensive yeah. and I think uh, the northeast is a biodiversity hotspot. Yeah. Maybe we cannot sustain that kind of plantation. Yeah exactly like you know whatever the law in Malaysia, whatever the, the law, whatever the practice there may be slightly different here. So I think uh, this, as far as Meghalaya is concerned, the government should try first with the, uh, with the research first and maybe they can try certain areas and find out. They should not uh, rush to it because it, we have a very limited uh, land. We, and then I don't think that the government should rush with it only if the central says that do this and we should do it. But we should have a trial, we should have a model where people can experience, people can learn. Like I told you, we are quite slow compared to the rest of uh, India. So I think we should also go along with the uh, nature, culture which we have and the resources which we have. We sh I, I, I don't appreciate that rushing whatever the central government has decided, but I do appreciate that uh, we have uh, universities here along with the universities like tea plantations and all these things you know the rest tea in Mekana would have been grown very fast very well would have got the best tea but looking at the labor we have to import labor so that's very serious so same thing it seems the oil palm also you have to look with all other aspects. aspects also, not only because you should not look only on the market the point of view or the economic in. point of view, mm -hmm. you should also look at the impact of that. So for to do that, you need to do a proper survey, proper research, uh, where our people will say, yes, this is uh, testified so we can go ahead with it. Thank you very much, sir. You have given us your precious time. So we wish you all the best and we hope that uh, you will be able to carry out uh, your aspirations for the state of Meghalaya. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for your blessings. Thanks for uh, all of you. Thanks for your your time is more valuable than me. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much.